Hi, thanks for joining me. This is the fifth video for the Lulu Roses Quilt Along. So I have sewn my strip to all of my rows and now we are ready to set the seam and press them. So all I'm going to do is take my iron and just press. This is setting the seam and if you've watched many of my videos, um, this is a step we usually always do. Now what we want to do is we've got the same piece and we want to press our seam to the dark side. And although this is not that dark, we don't want it going over the uh, jelly roll strip, okay? So I've got started just a little bit and you just want to press and you just want to make sure that your um, seam is on the dark side. Let me get to a section that I haven't already pressed. Okay, so here we are. I just do a small section at a time. Hopefully you can see that. I tell you, I have ordered some equipment to um, change the way I film my sewing videos, but um, until I get through the, the month of May, uh, I can't look at learning anything new uh, or setting up any additional equipment in this house. Brooke's graduating and she's got her gallery showing and then she and I are leaving for her um, graduation present. Actually in compliments of Stampin' Up! So we're excited. Okay, let me turn it over now. I can see I messed up on one section. So that's the other thing about this is that you can always turn it over and see the other side. And if you've got any sections that are a little bit wonky, um, you can fix them. So I'm just so row one, row two. We're gonna turn this over, place this right sides together and we are going to pin it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is get this entire row kind of lined up. Okay, just like that. And then I'm just going to kind of fold it up a little bit right now and go back to the beginning here and we're going to pin. Now this I do pin and I pin a lot because I want it to be straight. So make sure I'm in the camera here. I'm going to line up the edge here, right there, okay, and I'm going to pin it. Now before I go over to the right, what I want to do now is come down here at the bottom and pin this far left side as well. Sometimes I've found that your fabric will shift if, if you allow your bottom to shift as well. So we're going to put that in place so that it, there's no movement at all. And then you don't want to pull or you don't want to pull on this because remember um, the jelly roll strips um, they stretch. So we don't want to do that. We don't want to encourage any more stretching. We just want to lie it flat and pin it. Something else. Okay, so here's what I do now. I come I skip a little bit of that middle section and I come down here to the right. So let's say things are not lining up by going ahead and extending to the very end you can kind of make some minor adjustments in the middle there and I actually pinned more than what I normally do but the beauty of this is that it looks like it's completely lining up there's no um, there's no accidents there's no uh, ripples or anything so that's good but I will admit that sometimes there is a row that sometimes will end up being a little bit longer um, than the other one and if that is, just kind of incorporate it somewhere in the middle and preferably near a seam if you can. Okay, so I need to get this quilt along done. And you guys, at this, if you're at this point of the quilt, you already know how to sew a quarter inch seam. So we're going to pretend I'm at my sewing machine. This is where we're going to sew. Quarter inch seam all the way down the right side until we get to the very end. And yes, I'm going to bat stitch, even though people tell me I don't have to. So, so all the way, 
and when you're done you're going to have one and two connected after you do one and two then I want you to do three and four and then five and six and then you can add seven later so what I've done already to save myself some time because I did want to get this quilt along wrapped up um, I have already done <laughs> three, four, five, six, and seven. So I only work with two rows at a time because I found that to line up the quilt, it works a whole lot better. So again, you're gonna sew three, three to four, you're gonna sew five to six, and then you'll add seven at the end. So now I'm gonna go upstairs, I'm gonna sew one and two together, and then I'm gonna sew three to two, and we're going to have one big piece. We still have more sashing to add. So I'll be back and I'll show you how to do that pinning. Okay, so hold tight. Okay, I am back. So I have all of my rows sewn together. So now the next step is we are going to add our, we need to add one more sashing over here on the first row. So what I'm going to do is get Remember, we have three more pieces of sashing to add. So one of them is going to go to the first. And so all I'm going to do is turn this over and pin it. Start down here on, let me find the middle here. <laughs> okay, so starting down here at the end, and I'm going to find. I'm going to match up my seams right here, okay? And I'm going to pin it. And then I'm going to work to the right. So just like last time, I'm going to pin to the right first. Okay, so just like previously, I'm going to go up there, I'm going to sew a quarter inch seam all the way down, and then I'm going to trim off this extra, so I will be back. Okay, I am back, and I have sewn the sashing on to the left side over here, and now we are ready to add our sashing to the top and to the bottom, and we are completely done. So, um, all I'm going to do now is just take my sashing. I'm going to get up here to my top row. Now a piece of advice that I'm not going to actually follow today, and I should, but um, it'll be okay, is that you want to actually press your seams before you add this. Um, I'm going to pin it and then I'm probably going to unpin it upstairs and then sew it. So what I'm going to do is line up this seam here with this just like we did before, and I'm gonna pin it. And I will probably fast forward this so that you can see the whole process, but you don't have to uh, listen to it, or you can watch it quickly. Okay, so now I'm gonna do the exact same thing to the bottom, so I'm just gonna turn it around. Here's the bottom, and I'm gonna pin it and then I'm gonna sew it. So I'm gonna just go ahead and stop the camera and I will be back after I've sewn uh, both of these on, okay? Okay, so I have added the sashing to the top and the bottom and now what we wanna do is trim off that extra. So I've got my ruler and my cutting pad here. Again, remember, don't, don't pull on it. Just let it lie naturally and hopefully that's lined up <laughs> okay i think it's time to change my blade now let's get the other side Whoops. 
Okay, now we're gonna do the bottom. <laughs> okay, so you can't see it in this picture, but I'll be sure to post pictures. Next, what we're gonna do is check for holes and trim all the extra thread. So all these little threads that's coming through, I will trim all of those, and then I will also check it for holes. So now let's measure it so that we can determine our backing fabric and our binding fabric. Okay, so I'm just gonna take my tape measure here, and let's see, this is actually the bottom. I wanna make sure I don't get the ink pen on here. So, at this point, you're probably trying to figure out where exactly is the top of your quilt, and so it might be beneficial to leave those pins in for a little while for your rows. I just remember that this is my top left. In fact, my sister always says, "Put a put a pin in your top left square. That way, you'll never you'll never lose which which is the top of your quilt." Okay, so I'm just going to start over here on the left side. And I'm just going to measure all the way across. Now when I was um, um, beginning this quilt along, I had, not, I had made a bigger size. So I gave you guys an approximate size, but it looks like um, I wasn't really not accurate. <laughs> it was total guesswork because I never made this size. So I think I... I think I said it was like 66 by something, but it is actually uh, 58 and a half by, I guess you have to take into consideration all of the seams. Um, so it seemed like it was gonna be a little bit bigger than what I anticipated based on how many blocks now, if you want to make it bigger, you just add more rows or you cut your fabric in bigger squares. I'll make sure I go and adjust the instruction sheet too to reflect the actual size. Okay, I believe that's 67. Again, I will confirm these measurements um, before I post it on my website, okay? Okay, so now I'm going to open up my iPhone and we're going to be using the Robert Kaufman quilting calculator. I'm just gonna open it up and we're gonna skip the banner part. Skip. We're gonna click on backing and batting. We wanna type in that it's 58 and a half by 67. And I'm gonna use eight as the overage. Ask your long arm quilter what they prefer and then I'm gonna click, click on calculate. So that means I need uh, four and five eighths yard of backing fabric. Then I'm going to get out of this one and then I'm gonna go to the binding and my binding strip is gonna be two inches. Again, I got that from a long arm quilter so my width is 58 and a half by 67. It is going to be the bias binding and click calculate. And I need a half a yard for back, uh, binding fabric. Okay, so that wraps up our Lulu Roses quilt along. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to post them on our Chicken Scratch quilt along Facebook group. And I will see you again probably in June with the next quilt along. It is going to be a very simple quilt. We have a lot of new, uh, new quilters that are beginners. And I have a quilt that's super, super simple. So that's probably what we'll cover in June. But feel free to continue sharing all of your beautiful projects on our group. Have a great day. Thanks a lot. Bye.